Hey quilty friends, I'm Natalia Bonner. Welcome. Okay, so it's Thursday. If you probably noticed, maybe you haven't noticed yet, every Thursday we've been sharing videos along on top of all the other videos that we've been sharing, but every Thursday at noon our time, which is mountain time, we've been sharing videos, either a live video or something that's just a little bit more lighthearted. Um, if you saw our video last week, we mentioned in it that quilting can become so serious and so kind of stressful sometimes that we think there's got to be something fun. We want to have the bring out the fun side of quilting and have a lot of fun with you guys. So that's what we're doing on Thursdays if you haven't figured it out yet. So keep watching every Thursday at 12 o'clock. Sometimes there'll be live videos and sometimes there'll be these more just kind of playful videos. So earlier this week on Monday over on my YouTube channel, make sure you check that out if you haven't. I posted a video that showed a different view of me machine quilting. So most of the videos that I'm sharing, I'm showing you just a close up of my actual quilting. And I've gotten a lot of comments. I quilt with just one hand. I do all my quilting on a Gamel 22 inch machine. And for all of my machine quilting, I'm using just my right hand. If you've never seen me quilt like this, it's just the way that I learned. I've just always quilted that way. I think there's a few reasons when I started out, you know, I started out learning how to do pantos and I wanted to be able to see the front of the machine a little bit more. So I always, just from the beginning, from when I started, I started working with just my right hand. Personally, it's just how I work. I feel like with ruler work, it's actually come in really handy because I'm guiding the machine with my right hand and holding the rulers with my left hand. It's worked out really well. But in the video on Monday, we showed a bit of that, which then brought up a whole bunch of new questions about how high my machine is. So today we're here and I'm going to talk to you about why my machine is set so high, why I put it up that, all the good stuff. So you know in these Thursday videos, we love to do giveaways and just have fun, be interactive with you guys and have fun. So today that's what we're doing. We've got a giveaway. If you've been following along in my Stitch Along, Let's Stitch with Natalia, every single day for 365 days over on YouTube, we are sharing video tutorials that teach you every single day how to machine quilt a different design using one of my three machine quilting rulers. So I have a few of these darling <laughs> Let's Stitch with Natalia panels that have slight misprints on them. And today I am giving away another one of these cute panels. It's free. Anybody with a mailing out address is eligible to enter to win. All you've got to do is leave a comment and tell us, have you ever stitched on a panel before? It doesn't matter if it's a panel that you bought at your local quilt shop or, you know, any type of panel. Just let us know, have you ever stitched on one before? We'd love to hear and chat back and forth with you. Now we just ask that you do share this video. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. The questions you've all been asking, I am going to stand by my machine and talk to you a little bit about that, but I'm just gonna tell you some of the basics why my machine is set so high. So as you probably know, I have been machine quilting full time, meaning all day, every single day, Monday through Friday for just over, well, right around 12 years right now. And when I started out quilting, I was quilting a lot like I am now. And I've always done a lot of custom work, a lot of free motion quilting and a lot of custom stuff, which when you start doing it, you'll realize that a lot of times you're going to start hunching over your machine and arching your back. And honestly, it can cause a lot of neck and back pain. And it's probably not the greatest thing for your posture. So this had been going on. And when I was... Honestly, I think I was about 27 years old, pretty young to start having pretty severe back pain. Um, I went to my doctor and talked about it. We did x-rays, all the stuff to figure, try to figure out what was going on. And it came down to, it was all muscle pain from standing over my long arm. So at that point I had to start going to physical therapy multiple times a week and different things to try to alleviate this back pain that I was having. And it was really frustrating because at that point I was just starting to fall in love with machine quilting and I felt like, you know, maybe this isn't something I'm going to be able to do. So at that time I actually did the retrofit with the Gamel quilting machine and added the Statler stitcher to my machine. So my intent at that point was that I could alternate back and forth. I could use the computer and do some quilting and then I could also do my free motion quilting. It would save my back a little bit. It worked for a little while. But 
the biggest things I can say that have helped me eliminate my back pain. So now I've quilted like this for eight years are raising up my machine. And the one you probably all don't want me to say is daily exercise, strengthening my back and neck muscles, learning better posture is one of the biggest helps that I've ever done. But raising my quilting machine a lot higher than what is recommended has helped more than you can even imagine that I can put into words. It's been such a great thing for me to raise that machine up and, you know, not feel like I'm hunched over so much. So I'm going to hop up and stand at the machine so you can see how high I've got my machine, why I have it that high. So let's stand up. Okay, so now we've moved over to the machine. I am standing up straight right now and you can see this right here is the highest bar which the machine, which the quilt wraps around right here. Um, so when I was originally quilting and had my very first machine set up, this bar right here was referred to as the belly bar. And the belly bar was set up more like down at my belly button height. So it's not like a huge amount of difference in height, but I did raise it up a little bit. So by raising up the machine, I feel like for me, as I stand at my machine, you can see here that my arm is now at a more comfortable height. I don't feel like I'm reaching up or anything like that. It's more comfortable right here. But also as I stand here, the quilts, everything on my machine is more at my elbow height. So I don't know if you can kind of see this elbow height right here, but this, everything, my working surface is more at my elbow height. So as I'm resting, you can see that my arm would be resting right here. Because I'm quilting just one-handed, I like to rest this second arm right on my quilts as I'm working and then work from there. So yes, my machine is set very high. It's set higher than what was originally recommended to me. I feel better <laughs> having this belly bar height a little bit closer to my chest. So if you want to call it something else, then you can go for it. But that's the way I like it. Okay, so I'm going to have a little bit closer look here. And I want to show you a little bit because I also have been getting a ton of questions about, because of the stitch along and so much work with rulers, about my extended base plate. Okay, so this right here is my extended base plate. Again, like I mentioned earlier, this is the Gamel 22 inch machine. This base plate right here is one that I bought when I originally bought my first Gamel machine. So it's an old one. The newer ones are nicer. Um, they are a little bit bigger as well. But what does this extended plate do and why is it so important? Well, when I'm doing any type of ruler work, I leave this on here. Now, I've mentioned in some of my videos that I actually pretty much do ruler work on every single custom quilt that I quilt. Okay, so the other thing that you may have noticed here is that on my machine, I have the ruler foot on there. I've talked about this in a few of the videos, but I do have the quick change feet that come, that are an accessory for the Gamel machine. So I can put different feet on this machine, but I actually, because I do so much ruler work, I prefer to leave my ruler foot on my machine all the time. Why do I do this? Well, I have found for myself that I've trained my eye to look at that ruler foot. So when I'm visualizing, when I'm looking ahead, when I'm doing any quilting, I'm just used to seeing that ruler foot on my machine. So it's something that I actually highly recommend if you're trying to quilt more kind of in the style that I do with a lot of ruler work and also quite a bit of free motion quilting, that if I just leave that one foot on my machine, you know, for most of the work that I'm doing and my extended base plate, then I'm ready to go. It's not like I'm having to take it off and switch and come back. I'm ready to go all the time. I'm comfortable working like that. That's what I'm used to working with all the time and I'm just getting really nice results that way. All right, so I hope that helped explain a little bit why I have my machine set so high. If you do have a Gamel machine, even if you don't have the hydraulics on the machine, every machine I've had so far, I have been able to adjust the height of the table. So you should be able to. Unfortunately, I do not know all the details and ins and outs of every single other brand out there. I wish I could tell you all yes or no if you can raise your machine, but that's something you will want to check with your machine manufacturer or machine dealer to see if you can raise your table up a little bit. Okay, so there's just one more thing that I did want to mention before we finish up today. Tension, tension, ah! Everybody seems to get so worked up over tension. And I do have one little tool that I want to tell you about that might just be the life-saving device you've been looking for. So this Toa bobbin gauge right here is my favorite little 
tension testing tool. If you do not have one of these already and you're working on a long arm machine, I cannot recommend this little tool enough. So what does it do? Well, you've probably noticed when working on a long arm that adjusting the tension is a bit different than adjusting your tension on a domestic machine. So on the domestic machine, obviously there's just a little knob on there. Mine's on the top that I can just easily adjust. There's even a red line on mine that's the recommended setting. It's pretty much if you adjust to that, for the most part, if you're using good thread, great tension. Okay, long arms, it can be a little bit different story. So the things that help me besides the toe gauge are using really great threads. I always use, most often I should say, I'm using bottom line in my bobbin and then I like to use so fine in the top. I just really love the results that I'm able to achieve by using those products, that combination. Yes, they are polyester threads. Yes, they are made for machine quilting. And guess what's even better about them? Yes, I do use them on cotton, but because they are polyester, the lint that they create is like next to nothing, which I love. If you quilt a lot, you know that quilting can become very, very linty and dusty and messy. So if I can reduce that just a little bit, it makes me happy. So with the toe gauge, what you do, you insert your bobbin into this little case, and then you pull the thread through here, and then you simply just pull down on it. So I'm pulling like this. And what is that doing? It's a telling me how much tension I have on my bobbin case. Now with my machine, with this particular machine, now they can actually vary. I told you how many times that I quilt on a Gamel 22. Now I do know that based on the size of the machine, especially on the Gamel, the um, amount of weight, whatever pressure that you should have on your tension gauge can vary a little bit. So again, check with your manufacturer, your machine dealer. I am not your machine dealer. <laughs> Um, so with this particular machine, the set, recommended setting is between about 150 and 200. So I'll pull that, check it and see if it's too high, too low, where I need to adjust it. And if I'm struggling with this, I can even adjust it between every single bobbin change until I know I get it right. It's not, it doesn't take a long time, it's not a long process, but it's something that can really help you. Once you have your bottom tension adjusted correctly, then from there you can work with your top tension and adjust it to where it needs to be. So I hope you all found a little bit of inspiration from today's fun, crazy machine quilting video. I hope I'm able to help you relieve a little bit of stress on your neck and back and shoulders and maybe even help with some tension issues. Anyways, <laughs> make sure you leave a comment and enter our giveaway. We leave our giveaways open. This one will be open for 48 hours. We will select a giveaway winner and announce it on this post. So like we said, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, also Patreon, our blog, all those good places that we are, and we will see you. We'll have another video posted on YouTube early tomorrow morning. See ya.